Good evening, and welcome to Unexplained Reality, the podcast about the weird, strange, and unexplained, but real. We are delighted to have you with us. Please grab your favorite beverage, sit back. And enjoy. Hello and welcome to Unexplained Reality with Brian Quinn and Harrison Quinn. Harrison Quinn. He's not as excited as I am to be here. <laughs> oh, and we have... dun dun dun, dun okay, so the Chihuahua. Say something. Apparently, he's not going to. Talk. He's the solemn type. Yeah, he's the solemn type. Until we start recording, he'll, he'll have something to say. Or at least walk around, make noise, or whine, right? Yeah. He's frozen in fear. So we uh, hope everybody's had a good couple of weeks without us. Yep. Know everybody's missed us and just been yearning for more. Well, we uh, we had some stuff going on. We went to Florida and we had these Disney tickets we had to use before they expired. So we had to use that. They've only been sitting around for three years. So we had to get those out of the way, and then we had some other stuff going on here at the house, and this and that, and just um, just too much stuff going on. So, well, we're back. So anyway, we apologize for that break we've you know, been off, but hey, we're not getting paid for this, so yep. we just try to do it when we can. We hope to make it more regular. We keep saying that, but there always seems to be life getting in the way. So, um, in case you're just checking us out for the first time, we're just a father-son duo here with our infamous Chihuahua talking about all kinds of crazy stuff, whatever we find interest in. Most of it has to do with cryptids or aliens or UFOs or just... Anything that's not really expl- un- uh, anything that's unexplained or weird, strange, something like that, that obviously people are seeing or encountering or having some kind of uh, um, interactions with um, that are real to them and uh, at that moment, but are unexplained. So that's what we do. Um, if you want to get us or you want to... Uh, to talk to us or be on the show you can get us unexplained.reality at yahoo.com and uh we're on instagram facebook twitter we've got a youtube channel where all these shows go to we don't really have any videos out there yet um i think there's some from like one of our first episodes when we interviewed richard um but that's about it so anyways So tonight, I think we're going to have, uh, since it's our first time back in our studio, I guess you would say, which is basically my office right off the living room, uh, we like to call to refer to as a studio. Um, we're just going to talk about whatever we want to talk about. Basically, news stories catch up where we've uh, been, you know, missed. So yep, some stuff. So it's going to be want... kind of like an open open mic. Night. Yeah, open mic without the music. <laughs> See what I did there? Although we could have Harrison in here jamming. True. Sure. We should do that one night. We should learn a song, get the old man picking again, <laughs> get the rust off my fingers, build up my calluses, and try to play something together one night. If we can come up with an intro song. Yeah. We can talk about Bigfoot. We can talk about aliens. We can talk about UFOs and Chihuahuas. 
So anyways, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, this show's taking a real dive. Yeah, I was going to say, get used to this. <laughs> Got about another hour of it, at least. <laughs> so you might as well turn this off now, so if you're not happy with the way things are going, because they're not going to get any better. So, uh, I have, um, do you have some stuff you want to talk about first, or um, you want me to go in them? What first I thing I wanted to talk about was the Amazon. The Amazon Echo laugh. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is... <laughs> that's pretty funny. That's really crazy. It was, if you guys don't know, uh, devices that have Amazon Echo or, uh, on them, they started just laughing in, uh, Alexa's voice. And nobody knows why. Amazon hasn't come out with any official statement saying why, but they just said they're working on it right now. <laughs> and just out of nowhere, people's Amazon Echoes just let out a little giggle, a little sinister little chuckle. <laughs> and then everybody's just like, what is going on? And Could just, you imagine being asleep and that happened? I mean, I'll freak out. Oh my god. I No. I'm, that's crazy. <laughs> I can't even think of that. I just shot my Echo. Your phone. Your phone's just like... <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> I didn't ask you to do that. <laughs> that would be that'd be better than <laughs> yeah. The Amazon the the one right now is pretty creepy. It's kind of sinister sounding. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty creepy. That that is wild that they don't know what's causing it. Somebody actually they had to hack it or something. That's what I'm thinking. Like you said, they got global updates, and somebody figured out how to hack it and push out their their uh, little audio. creepy chuckle. Yeah. You think they could have done something better than just a lap? Which I guess that's pretty good. I found a, a video of it if you want me to play it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think that's it. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the exaggerated echo. I think <laughs> I've been Rickrolled. <laughs> oh, oh, oh right. They, we're not a... Yeah, I think so. Not, not sponsor. sponsor. Sorry, that's not a sponsor of our show. That's a start laugh box. <laughs> that's what it is. All right, dude. I thought you had better research than uh, this. Th- that's just what I found. Well, I uh, you should listen to it before you put it on here. Okay. We'll get back to you with that. That's, so, that's what all the... I'll go into my next story because uh, it's obvious Harrison's got some work to do. Okay. But, yeah, it is, it's not that laugh. It's not like a, a 1700 samurai laughing. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Like that. All right, so uh, I, got, I got some news stories. These, uh, the first ones here are cryptozoology news. One of my favorite websites. Um, this one's a um, trucker, dr- uh, tr- <laughs> a trucker driver, truck driver spots Bigfoot in Missouri. There's a lot of stuff going on in Missouri. I just heard another cop got shot last night there and killed. Mm-hmm. It's horrible. That, that picture is not Missouri. How do you know? Missouri don't have mountains like that. How do you know that? I'm positive. Maybe it's the. I've never been to Missouri. Well, maybe I have. Maybe I've been to Missouri. I can't remember. But they don't have mountains like that. That's the Rocky Mountains, dude. Maybe it's the mystical mountains of Missouri. Man, that's Alberta, Canada. There's no way that is in Missouri. There's no way, is it, K2? All right, so it says this man, a truck driver who's. uh, The man, a truck driver whose name was not released, says he was driving on I 35 on January 29th. When the two-legged being showed up at 4.15 p.m. Hey, that's a daylight sighting. How about that? Yeah. That's rare. Um, I had just passed the Wallace State Park, he told BFR. Hey, what do you know? Another state park. They love state parks and national parks. Protected lands. Uh, I was going around a curve when I saw it. It was sunny, no clouds. He described it as very tall, brown mass, walking on two legs, biped. He said was walking from the grassy area into the woods. It took three steps to get into the woods. It happened so fast within seconds, and it was gone. The truck driver claimed he reported it to the authorities. I asked the highway patrol if they had had any sightings in the area, and they said no. I asked if there were bears here, but they said there were only mountain lions sometimes. I think my semi startled it. Um, yeah, that's funny. What? Law enforcement said no. <laughs> you just saw a bear. 
even though we don't have bears here. True. I mean, you saw a mountain lion walking on two legs. <sighs> Law enforcement. Nobody <laughs> wants to admit Bigfoot's real. People need to just suck it up. Cause when what you... is this? Police officer claims seeing large snake-like bird. A snake-like bird? Never heard of pterodactyl? Not a pterodactyl. A fly dactyl. How could I? How could I be so reckless and For careless? Real. I'm. I'm you're you're so fired. If anybody out there is you any, are fired. Any level into paleontology or paleobiology? You are a disgrace. Do you to know? Do you know my mistake? This though? field of research. No, I don't know. You don't. You don't even know my mistake. I said, but you're still fire. I said pterodactyl, but <laughs> I was referring to pterodactyl as a being. But a pterodactyl is in fact a group of pterosaurs, and oh yeah, a pterodactyl is like like a flock. You know what you used to call them when you were little, right? Fly dactyls. Fly dactyl. There's a fly dactyl. Sorry, I can't believe myself. I can't believe I made such I'm, a careless mistake. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed with you. People like. Like paleontologists will jump at people's throats for stuff like that. Like they'll um, be like, they'll be like, it's horrible. It's a pterodactyl. And they'll be like, what did you, you should, say? You should take yourself out back and flog yourself. All right, come on, Kason. Okay, so. <laughs> Let the Chihuahua take, do it. We're gonna have some water torture in our pool at <laughs> nine p.m. I got water border by a Chihuahua. Um, this is uh, also from Cryptozoology News. Police officer claims seeing large snake-like bird. I'm guessing he's talking about like the skin or something, not having feathers, mm-hmm. which would you know fit right in um, with a prehistoric sighting. But it says Mercerville, New Jersey, a f- uh, former law enforcement officer claims he saw an unidentified flying animal. The anonymous man said he was on his back porch when the purported creature flew by on January 18th. Uh, it was flying from the east towards the west and northwest direction at 5.20 p.m. Reportedly, the unusual being had two sets of wings. It had uh, a rectangular one and another set of smaller wings at the end of its body. The uniformly gray-colored body, the New Jersey resident added of a MUFON, on a MUFON report, uh, was slender and long, and it was headless. Hmm? Headless? Maybe it didn't have a head. I couldn't see a beak either. It didn't have legs or feet. It was about... 10 feet long and thin, like a snake. Its wings very thin and long, move like an eel or snake. The reported creature was flying above the neighborhood trees when the eyewitness lost sight of it. He claims that it was not a drone, as it was not mechanical in nature, and that it moved through the air like a sea creature would move through the water. I'm familiar with uh, I'm familiar with anything that moves around us in our natural habitat, said the retired police officer. This was not any natural earthly flying creature. Hmm. That's interesting. Do you think? Mm-hmm. I do indeed. I do indeed believe that's interesting. I didn't know, um, hmm. Weird. All right. Next one is uh, it's also crypt. I'm gonna read like everything from cryptos. I'm reading the website. This one is hiker claims Bigfoot encounter in Washington. Uh, a hiker in northeastern Washington state claims he had an encounter with a Bigfoot creature. Uh, the man whose name was not released said he was with four other people at Colville National Forest when the biped showed up during daytime. Uh, we were heading north. We had just encountered a field. Um, it was surrounded by woods. He told the BFRO about the October 13, 2017 encounter. There was this tree in the middle of the field. As I approached it, I heard some noise. The Washington man reportedly hid behind the tree to pinpoint the source of the noise. That's when he claims he made eye contact with the two-legged being about 30 yards away. I thought he was going to say the creature was the being. I was hiding behind the tree, and it turned out to be a creature. And you people don't, you, you don't know you're, you're listening to us right now and all this, but I'm sitting here getting stared down by a little chihuahua. 
have our own cryptid in house. Uh, for 30 seconds, he adds, the creature stood there looking at each other. Uh, he has a creature. Um, he described the stocky, eight looking subject as being seven feet tall and exhibiting dark brown hair. Um, its hair was shaggy and the head was rounded and earless, containing dark, piercing eyes. Soon my fight or flight kicked in and I ran over to where my friends were waiting for me. He explains, then it charged, but not at me. It went in a different direction. Uh, the eyewitness says he is an avid outdoorsman and that he had never seen anything like it before. That was not a bear. That must have been Bigfoot, he said. Sounds like to me, too. Or a mountain lion walking on two legs. Yeah, you're right. Because, you know, sometimes they just do that. They do. Yeah, they just they just be like, can it, I like walk? And then just if you walk. get, I mean, why? I mean, same thing with dogs. Like, who's gonna make me walk on four legs? Exactly. I'm not, I'm not taking any more. They don't have to. You're not oppressing me. Exactly. I am walking on two legs. I might skip and jump on one leg. Who cares if their their hip bones don't match for that mm-hmm. type of walking it doesn't matter like they just walk anatomy like what's the, i mean come on it's overrated what even is it like what is science like what? right just like what, what is gravity exactly what no what is gravity like, what is gravity nobody understands gravity nobody knows gravity nobody, everybody we, understands like the kind of the basic concepts of what's gravity. it good for other than holding you to the ground yeah. i mean come on you're right. Keeping the universe together. You guys didn't see it, but, but you know, our Chihuahua just made a I know, that was pretty cool. From my lap to... Yeah, it was, that was pretty, uh pretty technical move there. That was, was pretty good. But you know, talking about walking on two legs, he does it. We should video him. He does it his front two legs, though. Yeah, he does it his front two legs. He wants only to be when, even more different than all the other ones. Only when he pees, though. Yeah, that's true. We have a talented chihuahua. Anyways, we're uh, we're slipping away here. Um, you got something before? I'm just gonna sit here and read the whole website. Go ahead. Thought you had some stuff. Dude. Not really. You know, nothing to talk Amazon about. Just laughing. I mean, oh, no. the CBS, NBC. That's the station. They're both stations. I think NBC has an interview with Putin this Friday. Oh uh, yeah. I'm not getting into all the politics of that, though. I'm not getting into politics, but I just think that'll be interesting. I didn't figure they'd get someone with such. I'm sure they're not going to get anything from that guy. Uh, no, probably not. He's ex KJB, KGB. So I guess he's not re really ex KGB. I think probably still Once KGB. Yeah, I mean he's the president of the country. So, but yeah, Megyn Kelly's going to be interviewing him apparently, or did interview him. Um, there was something I had, uh, oh yeah, I was looking at earlier on my phone, I meant to bring it, let's see if I find it again. There it is. It's on the Facebook. Oh man, it done refreshed and I lost it. But it was, it was in, um, where was that, Minnesota or something? It was somewhere up north or Midwest or something where, um... The, uh, there was like all these lights or something, the, the, the things flying all over the sky they had on the news, the local news there. Was it the, the SpaceX thing? No, 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 I don't know what it was. No, it's like, cause in, I can't remember where it was. It was some, some like mid, mid Western state. But it was uh, SpaceX had launched. I think it was Falcon Nine, and it was leaving the atmosphere, and it made this crazy trail. Nobody knew what it was. No, until... these things were. There was like a, tons of these little uh, things, and they were going all different directions. <laughs> oh Lord, dog! Our two, our two off watch just gave himself a concussion. Yeah, I think he just <laughs> knocked a tooth out or something. I don't know. What was he trying to do? I don't know what he, he was just doing. Like, threw himself. I think the he desk. was going to jump on the desk or something. <laughs> He crashed my laptop. He just threw himself into the desk. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> How many fingers am I holding up? Oh, um, all right. So, um, the next story I got is a uh, new Neanderthal sighting. This one's in Finland. I don't think you very hear, hear very much stuff from Finland. Not really, no. So, 
people are pretty chill over there. Um, a man in eastern Finland says he saw two hairy Neanderthal-looking humanoids. Oh my gosh, I cannot pronounce that guy's name. Where is it? Well, this is apparently where he lives. Rotovara resident Asaki Miyato. This is Lee. That's an L, I think. Huh? I think that's an L. That is definitely an I. I can't see it from where I'm at. Well, then sit back. So, Is- I'm sitting here. Isaki Miyato. Mito told Cryptozoology News he was chopping firewood next to his house when he came upon the two beings on December 21st, 2017. They're probably bringing him Christmas gifts. Uh, I live in a relatively secluded area with the nearest neighborhood living kilometers, neighbor living kilometers away. The 48-year-old who claims to hold a PhD in aerosol physics? Aerosol? What? In what? Aerosol physics? Aerosol physics. Now we know who designed hairspray cans. Maybe. Yeah. Interesting. Where did the WD-40 can come from? This guy. He's an aerosol physicist. Obtained at the University of Eastern Finland. Said about the encounter, the weather was dry and cold. Well below freezing temperatures. And there were there was already a layer of snow on the ground. I wonder if this is really his house. That's pretty cool. Probably not, huh? Probably stop, Koda. After firing up the stove in his sauna, says Mateo, M- Mieto, um, he went back inside the house to have a snack. I checked through the uh, window. Smoke was still coming from the sauna's chimney, and I noticed two vaguely humanoid figures exiting the sauna, leaving the door ajar and stalking into the woods. The two creatures he added were big humanoids walking in a hunched posture. After I lost sight of the figures in the woods, I checked the sauna and it had warmed already pretty well, only that the door was left open leaking the warmth out. I produced an electric torch from the anteroom of the sauna and with its light, I saw that the unexpected visitors had left brownish coarse hair around. Huh, how about that? Mieto also added that he was able to observe a few footprints but that the alleged creature was uh, creatures were barefoot. Um, it was hard to examine the footprints of the snow and the incoming dark, but they were human-like, only larger. Wow. That's pretty cool. So, two Neanderthals, yeah, just went and hung out in the sauna. Got their sauna on. Sounds fun. Yeah. Spa day. Why not? The snow on the ground is freezing cold. You see, Asano was, you know, the guy cranked up the fire. Why not? Apparently, they're not that dumb. They knew what Asano was. Yeah. They're like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> what was that movie? Um, did you see the movie Iceman? I don't think so, no. Beta. No. <laughs> 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 you should watch that movie. It's where they find a Neanderthal uh, frozen in the ice um, and they thaw him out and bring him back to life and then they build like this, what do they call the indoor, you know, environment? Habitat? Like a, yeah, a habitat. Don't they have a word for it? The indoor environment? Yeah. Like an indoor habitat for something. Like a, a enclosure? A gerarium or something. <laughs> <laughs> or is that a flower? <laughs> a terrarium. A terrarium. A terrarium, a terrarium is like a, like a something like it's that. It's like a cage. Terrarium is like a cage. Whatever. Like the things that they built this enclosure, like you know, with a creek in it and everything, like inside this facility and like wherever they found them, Antarctica oh. or something like that. And he lived in that, and it was just funny their interaction with them. But I think, yeah, I think. I believe the guy that they got to play that part, he didn't really need a whole lot of makeup. Probably not, no. Mm-hmm. If they, they had to find someone that looked like a Neanderthal. Kind uh, of. He looked like he'd been eating meat off the bone for a long time. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's a chihuahua behind me. Mm. He's looking all weird at me. Um, Alright, so... Um, are you a black-eyed chihuahua? You still don't have... 
He would be easy. He just goes around ringing doorbells. <laughs> he just barks until they open the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or pull a fly spotter out yeah. for him. He runs and, and hides under the sofa. <laughs> I pulled the flash water out and he ran in my house and got under my sofa. <laughs> I want him out. Everybody keep a flash water at your door. Well, I'll tell you I'm, right now. You better I'm... have some gloves like you get you an opossum. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna go bad on you. Yeah. Um, this is a North Carolina woman claims a werewolf sighting. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Winston-Salem, North Carolina woman, North Carolina says she saw a creature that looked like a werewolf. Oh, it is. Um, 26-year-old T.I. told Cryptozoology News on Thursday that she was driving her son to her mother's house when she encountered the creature in 2017. There are a lot of woods there. I was about to get out of the car, she said. Looking to the right, I saw what looked like a wolf, but much taller and white or yellowish eyes. Um, the unusual canine, she added, howled when the eyewitness got out of the car. I grabbed my son and ran to my mother's door. As I looked back, the animal seemed gone, but while knocking the door, I looked back again and I noticed something black running away. I can tell he was mad. How can you tell when he's running away that he's mad? No, he's just running aggressively. <laughs> How's that going? Don't worry about it. How's that going? Yeah, that was awesome. It was, it was like a long uh, stride I, run. I wish we... <laughs> You could have a video of that to put on Facebook. That was pretty awesome right there. He, he runs aggressive. I'm pissed off and I'm not taking it no more. I'm getting out of here. Uh, the woman described the animal as six foot tall, black werewolf with white and yellow eyes and claims that it stood there for about three minutes before it ran off. Mad. The dog man is a cryptid reputed to live in the northwestern quadrant of Michigan's lower peninsula. Um, although other sightings have been documented in other states, such as Wisconsin, this unproven creature was first reportedly spotted in 1887 by two lumberjacks who described it as having a human body and a dog's head. He had a dog's head. Could have been worse. Could have been a sheep head. All right. I don't know if we've ever done this one. I think we did the red Bigfoot, didn't we? I believe we uh I believe we covered that on one of the previous shows episodes. Um let's see, what is this? This is from Phantoms of Monsters and it's uh like he's got a lot of articles about UFOs out here. So in 1988, I was six year old. My family and I lived in the, in the country surrounded by Indiana cornfields. Our nearest neighbors were probably a quarter of a mile away with a field separating us. I remember waking up in the middle of the night by lights flashing my room. As my eyes adjusted to the room, I noticed outside my bedroom window something was floating above our neighbor's house. It was a craft that had uh, a count had counter-rotating lights of every color of the rainbow. I laid in the bed parallel, uh, paralleled, I guess paralyzed by fear, unable to move or scream. Fast forward 20 years later, I casually bring it up to my mom in conversation. What she said shocked me. She told me that the next day I said, Mommy, something scared me. She asked what, so I told her. I was not an overly imaginative kid, so my mom was really taken aback. It freaked her and my dad out so much they actually went out in the field to look for the tire tracks. Uh, for tire tracks, thinking I seen a combine or something. Needless to say, they didn't find anything. Okay. I guess back then they wouldn't have had no drones or anything like that. So uh, that's pretty weird. Um, <clears throat> the next one's from Brampton, Ontario. It says, in Brampton, Ontario, a few friends and I observed a bright light that we first thought was the moon, but the moon was behind us. This was 1997, and this thing was so damn bright and went behind a cloud and blinked out. 
Even back then, I had knowledge of Men in Black and convinced my friends to not alert any authorities or media about this. Now I'm even more grateful since I heard this story how the guy didn't even report his sighting. Now get this, my friend who saw this with me claimed he got a phone call in the middle of the night that made beeps and an eerie howling noise, howling sound. Um, He hung up and told me that he doesn't know why, but his mind was 100% convinced the call had something to do with the light. That's pretty wild. That is pretty pretty weird. That's kind of crazy. That almost gets into that. I mean, it's bad enough, you know, well... Oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? I said that almost, that almost gets in the, either like the men in black type, like the little flash thing they have, but like yeah. maybe like an audio recording like thing of it, but like, or like extraterrestrials trying to contact humans through their means of, you know, whatever. Yeah. They try, yeah. try to. You say you, the phone rings in the middle of the night, you wake it up and you hear, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Oh it's, damn! It's, it's more screwed. <laughs> you get off phone like, damn! I can't remember what I had for lunch yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> what did they make me forget? <laughs> hey, your friend goes is like, hey Bob, you, know, you want to go? To- who are you? <laughs> who are you? What's I don't mo- know who you are. What's a movie? What's a movie? <laughs> what is lunch? <laughs> <laughs> They erased a little too much. I can't much. remember what I had for my midday meal. What are what are these things on my feet? <laughs> They're shoes. What? I don't know what that. What are feet? I got sausages <laughs> hanging off of my feet. Yeah. <laughs> I got some dead cow wrapped around my foot. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Um. So then this one says, the next one is, during the 1990s drug wars, my team and I saw a spaceship or anti-gravity craft in the Columbia jungle while tracking cocoa farms and traffickers. My unit was at the edge of the river with a group of 30 men, 26 Colombian commandos, including myself and four U.S. advisors slash DEA um, around 0600 hours. When all of a sudden the craft the size of a school bus rose right out of the water and just hovered around 50 yards in front of us. Um, It then proceeded to scan our entire group with some kind of laser light and then slowly tilted 90 degrees and shot up into what I can only assume was the stratosphere in the blink of an eye. No sound, no smell, just gone. No one talked about it for about 45 minutes and then reality set in on the amazing event that had taken place. I'll cut my story short, but not everyone saw a spaceship. Some of the men saw a golden orb, while others saw angelic vision. Uh, That was our last mission as a unit. Transfers and relocations followed. That's crazy. Yeah. Especially with the varying accounts. Some people didn't see the same thing. Some people saw golden orbs. Some people saw a spaceship. Some people saw angelic visions. Right. It's kind of a... Weird, almost well, a psychological thing. Pablo Escobar had a lot of money. Yeah, but he didn't recruit aliens, did he? Maybe he did. Sure, you're right. He probably still up there. He's probably somewhere in outer space. They cloned him. <laughs> yeah, right after. <laughs> now he's a drug. shot. Killed him he, on that roof. He's a drug. He's a, a universal drug lord. So just a <laughs> global drug he's lord. Got a, all the grays working for him. They're always, uh... Can you imagine? That would be world ending. News, news, special news flash report. Pablo, Pablo Escobar, Escobar isn't dead he's, after all. He's been controlling aliens since the his alien death grays in uh, revived him, and he's gone to work for them, or they've gone to work for him. Whatever. We just know that Pablo Escobar is involved with aliens. Now he's smuggling cocaine to Mars. <laughs> An angelic golden orb of a school bus. School bus. <laughs> a glowing gold school bus with angel wings. <laughs> Ascended into the sky. <laughs> Come on. The golden glowing school bus. Filled with, with coca plants. With... <laughs> it's flown by cherubim. <laughs> it's 
little chair babies, little Flying angel babies, babies flying the school bus world. all over. All over Tar Nation delivering his drugs. <laughs> the angel bus is delivering angel dust. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. We've, we've gone way, way off. We're place. off the charts. Yeah, we're this off is... the charts. Okay. So now I'm going to get to, uh, let's get some science. This was pretty cool. So this um, uh, is, uh, uh, what is this from? Sciencenews.org. Um, says a rain, rare rainstorm wakes undead microbes in Chile's Atacama Desert. Um, Chile's Atacama Desert is so dry that some spots see rain only once a decade. Um, salt turns the sandy soil inhospitable and ultraviolet radiation scorches the surface. Uh, so little can survive there that scientists have wondered whether snippets of DNA found in the soil are just part of the desiccated skeletons of long dead microbes or traces of hunkered down but still living colonies. Um, a rare deluge, deluge, I guess it would be, has solved that mystery. Storms that dumped a few centimeters of rain on the Atacama in March 20, 2015, a decade's worth in one day, sparked a microbial super bloom. Researchers reported uh, report February 26th in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. That storm initially threw a wrench into plans for scientists to get a snapshot of microbial life under normal hyper-arid conditions in the Atacama. But in the end, it came back as a lucky stroke, says study co-author Dirk Schultz Makush. Makush? So how do you pronounce it? Makush? I don't uh, speak German. <laughs> I don't well, I don't either. You well, speak more German than I do. Kind of sort of. Um, he's an astrobiologist at the Technische Universität Berlin. Ah, how about that? The you Technical know, University of Berlin. Right. Right. Not du very, hast Rex. Not very hard to yeah. put that one together. He and his colleagues drove mining vehicles into the desert to collect soil samples just a few weeks after the storm and then returned again in 2016 and 2017 to track changes as the moisture dissipated. Um, the team found microbes, a mix of extramo, um, extramophile archaea, bacteria, and fungi um, that were tolerant of uh, desiccation, salinity, and UV radiation. The kinds of species were fairly consistent across sampling sites, which suggests there's something of a native microbial community that can survive in this salty sand by going dormant between periods of moisture, says Schutzmacher. Macher. Macher. Uh, Schultz and his colleagues also found evidence for enzymes that are byproducts of cellular metabolism. And traces of ADP, the mo molecule that cells use for energy, lingered inside cells. Those markers of life were the most bountiful at the first sampling time and then declined as the soil dried out again. Um, collectively, it's evidence that microbes aren't just dying and leaving their DNA behind in the Atacama. They're laying low to live another day. That's encouraging uh, to Schultz Maka. Um, he's interested in Atacama as a proxy for conditions on Mars. Um, yeah. So, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, this was something I wanted to read here, too. This is, Chimps may play dumb to fit in. I do that sometimes. It's like every day of my life. Um, this is from InsideScience.org. Um, it says, Migrating chimpanzees appear to conform to local nutcracking culture, <laughs> even when they know a better way. Uh, doing something just for the sake of fitting in may seem like a uniquely human sort of foolishness, but now it appears that our closest primate relatives may also partake in such conformist behavior. A combination of direct and circumstantial evidence suggests that when chimpanzees migrate to new groups, 
They will abandon their old technique for cracking nuts and adopt the method of the local culture, even when that method is less effective. The possibility that they do so, even if that might compromise individual fitness and foraging success, is very surprising, wrote Lydia Luntz, an anthropolo- uh, anthropo- Why can't I pronounce? Anthropology. anthropologist and primatologist at the University of Oxford in England in an email to Inside Science. There must be a strong social benefit in exchange for it. Um, the research focused on three neighboring communities of chimpanzees in Thai National For- uh, Park in the Ivory Coast. Chimpanzees in all three groups rely primarily on koala nuts for food during the four-month-long koala nut season. They crack koala nuts by bracing them against tree roots, then striking them with hammers of wood or stone. A skilled nutcracker can make it look so easy, loons were called. It wasn't until I tried myself that I realized how much experience and practice goes into this. In three studies published over the past seven years, Luntz and her colleagues found that each of the three groups has its own nutcracking customs. The South group uses primarily stone hammers for the entire nut season, but the East and North groups are more and more wood as uh, use more and more wood as the season progresses. This shift may reflect the fact that koala nuts get softer and easier to crack late in the season. Chimps in the East group show an especially strong tendency to choose wood late in the season, and they also wield their hammers differently, using fewer strikes per nut than the other two groups. The differences between the groups probably aren't due to differences in environment because the researcher found the same abundance of wood and stone in all three chimpanzees' territories. They can't be explained by genetics either because the customs of each group remain consistent even as individual chimps migrate between groups. Instead, the nutcracking customs appear to be an example of culture. In a new study published in March issue of the Journal of Animal Behavior, Luntz and her colleagues um, investigated whether these cultural variations are equally efficient or whether some come at a cost. In each group, they recorded what types of hammers chimps used to crack nuts, how many times they hit each nut, and how many nuts they ate per minute. Stone hammers clearly worked better than wood throughout the nut cracking season. In addition, chimps did better when they used a larger number of light, precise strikes rather than a few hard strikes. Hard strikes can smash nuts, forcing chimps to waste time collecting broken pieces, according to researchers. Um, the East Coast was less efficient at cracking nuts than the other groups, uh, apparently because of its penchant for hard strikes and for wooden hammers late in the season. The researchers estimated that the compared to a South group chimp, an East group chimp would eat about 5,400 fewer nuts each season, um, translating to a nutritional cost of 74,000 calories. Oh, wow. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Mm-hmm. They're, they're developing their own culture and their own way of developing, not right. developing, but using tools to it's obtain like peer food. pressure at work in chimpanzees. Yeah. Kind Don't of. be coming here being all sassy using stones. We use wood. And we take little bitty strikes till later in the season and we whack the snot out of it. The thing, earlier in the season, they might be like weaker than later in the season. They harden, so they may need to. After they've had some nuts in them, they're like, "Yeah, now I got some energy." Well, hopefully, yeah, I guess. <laughs> but they shouldn't be because the, they said the the nuts get softer as the season uh, goes on. Mm-hmm. Dumb, oh, oh, that reminds me of, of an experiment I saw, and it was like, um, it was like a collective mind type experiment, and it was like they had five monkeys in a. Um, in a thing, and they had uh, they had uh, a couple shower heads over the enclosure, and they had a ladder, and the ladder led up to banana, a banana or like a group of bananas that were hung from the ceiling. Right. And whenever the monkeys went up, uh, whenever a monkey started to climb the ladder, they would spray the other monkeys with the cold water, like the really cold water from the shower heads. Right. 
And they eventually started doing it so much. Whenever a monkey would start to climb the ladder, the other monkeys would jump up and like pull them off and start beating them up. And they just started doing that. And then, and then they had that one monkey in there, and they removed the other four monkeys and replaced them with fresh monkeys, like ones that had never been in that type of experiment. And then one of the new monkeys started climbing up, and the old one beat him up, and the other ones, the other ones started like, hey, why doing it. up Jim? So, And they didn't, they didn't even do the shower thing anymore. It was just like a collective like thing that had just one of them had showed a behavior, and all the others had just followed him because that's wow. that's what he exhibited and all the others just followed yeah. along hey bob's beating up jim why not let's do it yeah it's crazy jump on him it's a crazy experiment that's wild yeah all right well the last one i got here is inside science.org again and this is the title of this article is bison slaughters destructive legacy for native americans this is when the bison were exterminated from north america indigenous populations lost an inch of height in just a generation. That's wild. Hmm. In 1870, there were at least 10 million bison in southern herd in the southern herd um, um, on the North American plains. Fewer than 20 years later, only 500 wild animals remained. That part of the history, the bloody removal of the animals for hides, meat, and to devastate North American communities is well known. Uh, we have countless movies, books, and ballads about the dust-strewn slaughter. What hasn't been so well studied is the story of what happened next to the people involved. That's the focus of a new report presented at the American Economic Association meeting in January. The researchers claim that the rapid destruction of bison created an equally dramatic decline in the heights of the Nor- uh, Native Americans who depended on them, and a worse per capita income uh, that persists today. You can imagine that would uh, that would happen to certain sections of the American economy if oil disappeared and people had no alternative, said Donna Fear, um, an economist at the University of Victoria, Canada. Now imagine that these people couldn't migrate to other economic activities and were kept in certain locations for 50 years. It will be a cultural and economic bomb that would continue for decades. Before the bison disappeared, the native people living in the plains were among the tallest in the world. They didn't um, diversify their work from a single resource, the researcher said, because the bison pretty much supplied them with everything they needed. They were at least as well off as European colonists at the time, researchers have argued. The idea of poverty coincides with the uh, reservation era, um, which happened after the slaughter of bison, said Fear. The slaughter changed everything. It happened in two waves. The first came slowly. European settlers brought cattle with them, and those animals competed for land with the wild bison. The second started in the 1870s after German leather makers created technology that allowed bison hides to be tanned more efficiently and economically. During 1871-1872, an average of 5,000 bison were killed every day as thousands of hunters poured into the plains. Um, The slaughter continued until 1889 when only about 85 free-ranging bison remained. In just a generation, the height of the Native American people who depended on the bison dropped by an inch or more, as measured by physical anthropologist Franz Bose, uh, who collected data on the height, gender, and age of over 15,000 Native Americans between 1889 and 1919. Groups that experienced rapid bison extinction had an even more precipitous drop. Children born after the slaughter were up to two inches shorter at adulthood than those um, than those born before the slaughter, and the research uh, the researchers found population declined as well, and what the researchers called a kind of cultural depression settled on bison dependent groups. Uh, Fear pointed out that the drop in height wasn't as steep for women as it was for men, perhaps because traditional women's skills like making clothing were more adaptable to to new, to new locations and animals. While men's traditional skills could have transferred to cattle ranching, government regulations forced people onto reservations where um, that was not an option. The researchers found that even today, formerly bison-dependent societies have between 20 to 40 percent less income per capita than the average Native American nation. 
Like, that's wild. Who would have thought to correlate something like that, you know? Yeah. But why Why do you think that is? I mean, they didn't really explain why. I don't know. Maybe they raised Just the more. lack of protein or something? The lack of nutrition? I don't know. Strange. Is there a strange direct I guess if it you know, puts them in poverty, if that's everything they needed, now they don't have it. Maybe. I don't know. It's strange. It is strange. It's hard to think of a, a direct correlation between those two things, especially when they're so different. The, You're not even paying attention to what I we're am. talking about, are you? I am. The the when buffalo started to be hunted to extinction, Native Americans, the average height of Native Americans started to drop more in men than they did in women. And they're trying people are trying we're trying to figure out the direct correlation between why when bison population started to Bro, No, not bison buffalo. Just, buffalo no, population. Bison. Was, was bison. it bison? Yes, bison. Are you sure? Positive. The okay. title was dun, 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 Bison Slaughter's Destructive Legacy for Native Americans. Bison. I got bison and buffalo mixed up. Okay. Bison. Okay. I, okay. But when bison started going extinct, then buffaloes were... I'm, you got me confused. When it bison matter. started to go extinct, Native Americans this started is, to get shorter. Uh, it does, the, the it doesn't matter. Is, this it, is what matters. If there is a correlation, then it's direct but it's strange I, I think it might just be a coincidence I don't know if there's a direct correlation maybe they just started it to had get, to be a direct correlation maybe they just started to get shorter this is a protein issue it's malnutrition but regardless when when I eat steak I'm, I'm gonna bison it I'm gonna bison it I'm gonna bison to it <laughs> anyways um I think that's all I have as far as news articles, finally. It's like a marathon here. That was not funny at all. I know it wasn't, but whatever. I feel bad for our viewers. Our listeners. Our viewers. I do too. I feel bad bad for you viewers. Because you're not actually going to see anything. Do um, you have anything else you want to talk about? Absolutely not. What? <laughs> I don't have anything else to talk about. I just sat here and read a bunch of news. You said it was going to be an open mic. I said we were supposed to sit here and like talk. We did. Did we not? We did, but we just talked about stuff we already talked about. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, by the way. uh, So, this is something I want to talk about. So, we got these... uh, um, We set up this tea public site with our, you know, a couple... Uh, t-shirts out there and there's actually a bunch of items you can you can buy with our logo on them there's two logos and if you click on those t-shirts there's a ton of other items i don't know why they only show you those t-shirts at the front there's hoodies there's tank tops there's little kids shirts there's um all kinds of stuff i wouldn't even think like tote bags and stuff who'd want a tote bag says don't explain reality but if you do you got there and buy it um, but here's the deal. We're probably going to have to look for another drop shipper there because somebody just told me that they went to buy one of our t-shirts and they were going to buy it until it got to the checkout and they realized it was going to cost them like $9 to have it shipped to their house. Yeah. The t-shirt was $14 and the shipping's nine. Yeah. That's crazy. So, um, anyways, yeah. if you do buy a shirt or we, we one definitely of the other, have we have stickers and stuff that are out there. If you buy any of that stuff, we do get a little cut of it. But we definitely have to switch to a new site because they don't have any pants that we can that pants. anybody can buy with our Here's logo the one on it. Sweat pants. We need pants with our we logo. We do, and then on you it. say you unexplained, and then reality on one leg, and unexplained on one leg, reality on the other. No, That'd be it needs awesome. to be on one leg. Nah, because what if someone sent down? Well, they need to have the option. Just, it just says unexplained. It just says unexplained. Unexplo- <laughs> They're like, what is unexplo? Even if it just, unexplo real. Even if they could see it, it just said, it would just say unexplained on one leg. Or well, you know what? What could happen is if that happens, and they're sitting there and they got their legs bent, and it says unexplo real on the other leg, and then you know they'll think that's like some kind of new cool saying or something. No. We'll become, you'll be at school and kids will be like, oh, it's for real, man. Oh, it's for real. Yeah, brah. Anyways. 
It could happen. Mm, it could happen. Very unlikely. <laughs> Probably very unlikely. <laughs> Doubt. Only in my brain. Um, let's see. What else do we need to talk about? Um, sea levels are rising. Sea levels are rising. Yep. Twice a day. <laughs> Smack. Ow. <laughs> I just thought of that one on the fly too. That was that even was a, a smart. That was yeah, smart. I know. I didn't. That wasn't even. So I didn't smart. hear that from anywhere. I just. You're so funny. You're witty. You're better than your bison joke. Yeah, that was pretty. That was pretty. I'm bad. bison my steak. I'm gonna so, bison so, into my steak. What? <laughs> He's gonna bison his steak. Um. There was something else that I wanted to discuss, and I cannot. Doesn't Mark Wahlberg have a restaurant where he sells like bison burgers or buffalo burgers? I don't know. They've got him and his brothers have got a restaurant, just a chain called Wahlburgers. Isn't there a place that sells bison burgers? Yeah, Ted's. Ted's. I think Ted. we went to a place in Kentucky that had it. I can't remember. I thought it was Wahlburgs, but I don't know. We did. Or we we didn't the go there, but we were we passed it. And you pointed it out to me. It was probably Ted's. I think say so, because the it's, the girls had gone um, into like Kirkland's. Or what's something. the guy that owned CNN? Ted. Uh, Ted Nugent. No, it was um Ted Cruz. No. Oh, what is that guy's name? The, the, I can see him. He, I, we, me and Mom, ran into him in Charleston. One he time. owns CNN. He owns CNN. He don't even own it. Uh, Ted Turner. Oh. Yeah, Ted Turner. He um he started the restaurant chain. It's called Ted's, and he's a bison rancher. He has a big bison ranch, hmm. and um, or buffalo, whatever. Neat. And uh, yeah, they, they I've eaten there before at Peachtree City, and they they sell bison burgers. <laughs> it's <was> real good. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I bet Neanderthals could eat the snot out of some bison. But they could. Right off the bone, be tearing it. Um, yeah, Ted's is pretty good. It's very, it's pretty expensive, Shut but it's out. good food. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We went to Augusta. We didn't even talk about that. Oh, yeah. Since we went to the lecture in Augusta. We really haven't had an episode since then, have we? No, we're slack. Oh, jeez. Horribly slack. We went to the uh, the Augusta Museum of Natural History. Was it Natural History? Museum of History. I, th- I think it was just a Museum of History. Yeah, but, I think so. Um, we went to an archaeology conference. Not really a conference. It's, it's like a, a lecture. It's just a yeah, presentation, basically. Presentation. And it was on the Paige Ladson, Florida, North Florida dig site. Yeah. And it was pretty interesting. Talked about how they found a almost fully preserved mastodon skeleton. Yeah. Uh, the guy that did the, the lecture was... Um, the grandson. One, the grandson of the owner. The owner he, of well, the I guess he's the current owner of the property now. Yeah. And, That's um, pretty interesting. We, we actually got found out about it. Like, the morning of... It was supposed to happen that night. We went... It was kind of spur of moment. Spur of the moment. But it was um, the Seven Ages audio journal guys. Mm-hmm. So um, they had posted on Instagram, Micah Hanks, um, who y'all know from the Graylian Report and the Middle Theory fame. Um, he's got a new podcast um, called the Seven Ages Audio Journal. Yep. With him and James Waldo and uh, Jason Pentro, really and we nice. actually got to meet them down there. Yeah, we're they were they were really nice. We talked yeah. we talked with them for a little bit after it was over. Yeah, it's just a few minutes. They had they were getting ready to interview uh, Mr. Latson about the Page Latson site. Yeah, so they'll they'll um, if you don't listen to them, you should be subscribing to them. It's pretty cool. If they're, you're not, you should be. Yeah, their podcast is about history, archaeology. All that, and um, they, um, I think they're going to be, they they said something about trying to get access to that site, and um, it's actually an underwater site, right? It was, mm-hmm. it was in the the creek or whatever there, yeah. the pond or creek or whatever it was. Um, <clears throat> but they're going to try to get access to that site. They said, and uh, so 
the they haven't posted the um, uh, episode about that yet, so I'm guessing they're saving that until they get to do further investigation and research about it. So, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, it was very cool meeting them. I wish you'd had more time. Maybe we'll cross paths again where we do have some more time. Um, I'm gonna th- uh, I sent them, I did send them an email, so we're gonna see if maybe they'll maybe come on to the podcast when you interview them. It'd be nice, yeah. Sometime we'll bring them down, bring them down to our level, so uh, they might go listen to our show before and change their minds. So. We'll let Queso interview them. Mm. Queso, you want a green bean? Queso, you want a green bean? Come on, do it. Come on, you want a green bean? Come on, you want a green bean? <laughs> That's right. Tell them about it. You want a green bean? <laughs> what? You know what we mean? <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you got to be on the podcast. How about that? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, uh, so yeah, it was um, <clears throat> that was a real cool lecture. And uh, if you don't know about that site, you should go out there and uh, look it up. I think there was a website, right? Mm-hmm. We looked at. I don't know it right off the top of my head, but if you go search paid lat uh, page Latson. Uh, dig site you'll you'll find all the information about it there's you'll you'll hit the link for the website and you can go check it out it's pretty cool um what else we have you got anything to add Kesa? huh what yeah so um harrison anything buddy nope i guess we'll put everybody out of their misery uh, as usual, if you have a story and encounter, we, we did actually have something lined up, but it fell through. Um, we were going to interview somebody, but um, they decided not to go forward with it. So apologize. That was also part of the delay. But um, if you have an encounter experience you want to share or, um, you know, you don't have to be on the show. If you just want to send it to us in email form, write it up, whatever you want to us to interview you and but not use it on the show we'll do that too we'll interview you and write it up and present it ourselves. um anyways you can hit us unexplained.reality at yahoo.com um you can also uh hit us on instagram facebook twitter um we are on youtube so go out there and subscribe to us and if you listen to us and you like us uh, like the podcast, um, please go rate us and review us on iTunes um, or your favorite podcatcher. But iTunes is the one that really matters because that's the one that really uh, where we get most of our downloads from and subscriptions. And when you do that, it just bumps our ratings up and we move up the charts and make us you know, more visible to other people. And it just helps you guys out. So um, helps us have better content and better uh, distribution, better, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Visibility. That's the word I'm looking for. It's more awesomer. Absolutely. So. um, I'm trying to think. Is there anything else? I guess that's it. Um, we'd like to thank our favorite podcasts, Sasquatch Chronicles, uh, The Grayland Report, of course, with Micah Hanks, uh, Into the Fray Radio, The Confessionals, Monsters Among Us, Seven Ages Research, Seven Ages, uh, Seven Ages Research, no, it was Seven Ages Audio Journal, I right? thought it was Research, the Seven Ages dot org. You should go check them out. They got some cool articles on, like, you know, not just the episodes that they put out, but they've got some really cool articles out there um, to read. Um, Cryptic Crate, uh, Cryptic Crate, yeah, should go check that out if you'd like to have a monthly box subscription to cool cryptid stuff. Go check out CrypticCrate.com. Get your uh, hookup. Um, who else do we listen to? I know I'm missing somebody, but there's uh, tons of uh, podcasts. Oh, OK Talk. Uh, Expanded Perspectives. How can we forget them? Mysterious Universe. Ah, I 
can't believe you let me forget that. And Secret Trains Podcast. So go check those guys out. All those are great podcasts. You should be subscribed to them and listening to them every day. And uh, we like to thank Ricky Young for letting us use his music on the podcast. Uh, so that's cool. And that's all I have, buddy. You got anything else? Oh, sorry to waste an hour of your life. But <laughs> we're at an hour and four minutes and 18 seconds right now. We apologize for that. You'll never get it back. Nope. Never. But you've been encouraged and enlightened. And your your life has been enriched beyond belief. Have I? I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about them. Oh. You're stuck with this. You're stuck with this for at least two more it's years. It's still questionable. Two and a half more years. Whenever you turn 18, then you can escape. <laughs> Until then, I'm your daddy. Yeah. You'll listen to what I say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, let's pull the trigger and put these people out of their misery. Everybody have a good week or two or three or four, however many winds up between this episode and the next one. We don't even know when we'll be back. We don't know. (laughs) We may never come back. No, we'll try to be back next week. Hopefully we'll actually have something besides news and babbling. Yep. Um, Aimless babbling. Have a good week, everybody. And... uh, Keep on keeping on. See ya. Bye. Bye bye. 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 Bye now. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Stop it. I want to buy. Just tell her bye now. <laughs> tell us a story, Ranger Jet. Oh, okay. I could tell you about the time I locked eyes with Sasquatch, or about my brush with the elusive Chupacabra. Then there was that encounter with the Mothman. Yeah, tell us about the Mothman. Of course, I once saw a lake monster and a sea monster on the same day. Wow! That's not even taking all the ghosts, aliens, and UFOs into account. You've seen all that as a park ranger. (laughs) No, son. Those are the creatures I've encountered in my cryptid crate. What's a cryptid crate? Cryptid Crate is a monthly subscription box that arrives on your doorstep each and every month. It's filled with various cryptozoology and paranormal themed items such as t-shirts, hats, art, media, and other collectibles. I want a Cryptid Crate. Yeah, I want one too. You can get yours by visiting www.cryptidcrate.com. Sign up is quick and easy and shipping is always free. I can't wait to get my Cryptid Crate, but for now, how about that story? I lost a real good friend of mine a couple days ago I got my wheels spinning, I got to laughing Cause I know what he's doing now 20,000 plus barefoot with his old guitar Eating up the spotlight Yeah, that's exactly where he wanna be One day when it's me I'll be floating down the Waccamaw River In the Carolina sun Rigging up a line Laid back having a nice cold beer With a friend I ain't seen in a long, long time all the water bugs scatter Having the time of my life On the day that I die mm-hmm. If I don't wake up tomorrow Tell mama I love her Tell daddy I love him too Little brother Buddy, I couldn't be more proud of you May feel like a real bad dream It may sting But don't cry for me Don't cry for me I'll be floating down the Waccamaw River In the Carolina sun Rigging up a line Lay back having a nice cold beer With a friend I ain't seen in a long, long time Watching all the water bugs scatter Having the time
rigging up a line Laid back having a nice cold beer With some friends I ain't seen in a long, long time Watching all the water bullets scatter Having the time of my life On the day that I die